Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. I remember when Fargo had 39,000 people in the town, and you could leave your house unlocked, you could leave your car unlocked, you could let your kids run. Those days are over and they'll never be back. Times are changing. That's what some North Fargo residents are saying about their neighborhood after a high-speed police chase led to a search in North Fargo. Good evening, everyone. B.J. Eglund was arrested, and Fargo police are still looking for two others. Holly police say it all started when they were alerted that Eglund was coming through the area on Highway 10. Multiple crews assisted with the chase and tried to stop the car with stop sticks. They called it off when the vehicle entered North Dakota. The vehicle was later found empty, and a search began in North Fargo. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop checked on the anxiety level of the neighborhood after everything that has happened. In this last week, people here in the Horace Mann neighborhood have been awoken at least twice by flashing police lights, unsure of what is happening outside their front door. And I looked out and I saw a police car driving real slowly down the street here and then stopped down at the corner. And then I saw a policeman walking along the sidewalk, so I knew they were looking for someone. Bruce Gerlitz has lived in North Fargo near Oak Street for nearly 40 years and says the neighborhood has some changes. With the other things that were happening in the neighborhood, uh, I just, you know, the city's getting bigger and, um, you know, a certain percentage are just going to be bad people, do evil things, and and uh, I still feel safe, so. This, this neighborhood has went downhill for the last 20 years I have lived here. It was a safe neighborhood when I first moved in. Others, like Daniel Hines, says there has been a change in the type of people moving into the area, and crime is nothing new. It's just a, it's just a common thing. I mean... This neighborhood, it just happens that way. Hines says he wishes the city would do more with the number of homes being converted into apartments or rented out. You know, that area has been a focus of our concern over the past year. Fargo police say they've had neighborhood meetings in the general area after last year's double murder near 12th Avenue North. They know people have concerns. So we have made it uh, very important to us to get in that area and to, uh, to be visual and be seen and uh, to be as transparent as possible. Hines and Gerlitz admit they have seen police presence and appreciate it. Glad the police are out there because they're doing the best they can do. But they only have so many people to take care of this neighborhood, and frankly, there's not enough. In North Fargo, Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. Englund was arrested on a parole violation. The Holly police chief says they believe they know who the driver is, but they're still investigating. The temperatures indicate we should be warm, but the wind is cooling us down. Will we have to hang on to our hats all night? Let's find out from Hutch Johnson what tonight looks like. Hutch? Thank you so much, Andrea. If you are heading out and about, the wind is going to continue to be very persistent across the valley. And a look at the radar shows we have some sprinkles well to the east for our eastern counties, Otter Tail, and out towards Wadena County, we're seeing some sprinkles. But an event out over the Montana North Dakota border will be moving our way overnight. So it will be quiet, but very breezy throughout the evening and warm. Take a look at your hour by hour planner mid and upper 30s all evening, even overnight here in the FM area. But by the time we get to daybreak, there will be some significant changes. There will be rain, there could be sleet, even flakes of snow. I'll have hour-by-hour hour details on what you can expect in your backyard coming up here in just a few moments. But for this evening, the wind is really all we will have to contend with. All right, thank you, Hutch. To some new information now, there are a few things you should know if you're attending Officer Mosier's funeral on Monday at the Shields Arena. No photography is allowed. Small children will not be admitted inside the area. 32nd Avenue will be shut down to the public from Veterans Boulevard to 45th Street South. Parking will be very limited and no private lots are to be used. If they are blocking any part of the motorcade route at all, or if they're blocking any part of uh, any of the parking spaces that they shouldn't be, we'll tow them out of there. If you choose to stay home, the funeral will be broadcasting live on uh, Valley News Live, KVLY specifically, as well as online at valleynewslive.com. West Fargo, Fargo and Moorhead Public Schools will not be canceling classes on the day of Officer Mosier's funeral. If a student or faculty member wants to attend the funeral, they'll need to go through the normal procedures to be excused. A family friend of Officer Mosier says at least five people are being helped thanks to his organ donation. Drew Schwann has been a friend of Mosier's since they were 10 years old. 
Schwann says the organ donation recipients range in age from 26 to 61, and that they received Mosier's heart, lungs, liver, pancreas, and kidneys. Many of the recipients were on long waiting lists. One of them waited over 1,000 days. More people could also be helped. Schwann says other usable uh, tissues include blood, blood vessels, bones, bone marrow, cartilage, connective tissues, eyes, and skin. For about a week now, one man has stood outside the Fargo Police Department with a sign reading, Police Lives Matter. Rest in peace, Jason Mosier. As the outpouring of support for the Fargo PD continues, Nick Barth says it's the people of this community who keep him going. We spent some time with Barth this afternoon as well-wishers thanked him and passers-by gave a honk in support. You're a good man. Thank you. They're the good men. I think I, I really hope that it's helping to heal this situation. And I know the police force has been very appreciative of what I've been doing, and so has the community, and that's been great. I'm honored to do it. I really am. Thank you, ma'am. God bless. You do pretty good. Thank you. I'll tell you. Thank you very much, sir. Yep. Thank you. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. You. you, you. Are you cold? Um. Okay. No. Oh, okay. I got some warm clothes on, and so. so. Good. <laughs> I think the most amazing thing that's happened so far was that Friday night, um, Officer Mosier's wife and Chief Todd and another officer came out to say thank you to me. You're again today. Yes, sir. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Thank you so right, much for everything. Get the, get the keychains on. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for being thank here. Thank you so us. much, Chief. It's been an honor. Well, it thank is. You. What, what is your name again? Nick. We've gotten a lot of honks and a lot of hand gestures and support. Thank you. The, then it's the energy of the people supporting me in the police department that's really kept me going. It really has. I mean, it's just been so wonderful and makes me feel like I'm making a difference out here. So I just want to stay out here and do it all the more. Nick Barth plans to be at the funeral ceremony in some fashion on Monday with his sign. He says it's been cold and people have been offering to buy him coffee, but he would rather that you donate the money. Area law enforcement are honoring a former member who passed away on the same day as Officer Jason Mosier. Today, they attended the funeral of former Cass County Sheriff Jack Daly. Daly was born in Barnes County, North Dakota in 1920 and served two terms as sheriff for Cass County from 1970 to 1979, starting as a deputy sheriff with the department in 1962. Daly is survived by two sons and a daughter. For a look at his full obituary, go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story. Governor Jack Delrumpel announced at the beginning of the month that state agencies will have to forfeit about 4% of their general fund budget. And today we got a look at some of those cuts. The organization that will lose the most money is the Department of Human Services. At nearly $54 million, they'll cut nearly $30 million in medical assistance grants and more than $1.5 million in salaries. A UND student is leading the charge for a vote to fully legalize marijuana in North Dakota. So there's now the possibility that voters could be voting on two separate measures this fall. One to legalize marijuana for medical use. The other would fully legalize it, including recreational use. 23 states have laws that legalize marijuana in some form. Four states have already fully legalized it, including its recreational use. Alaska, Oregon, Colorado, and Washington. UND student David Owen wants to add North Dakota to that list, in part to protect more young people from a felony record. If you possess a gram of marijuana, congratulations, you are a felon. And you will never really be able to get a good job because felons don't get good jobs. I mean, no white collar business wants to have felons on its staff. And we have created a permanent second class citizen who will always be on welfare and whose life will be completely and utterly destroyed. Owen says he'll be able to easily collect the 13,000 signatures needed in a petition drive to get the measure on the ballot. Meanwhile, a second petition is already circulating that would put a measure on the ballot to legalize medical marijuana. It's an issue that's creating quite a stir on social media. Go to valleynewslive.com and go to our Facebook page to get in on that conversation. 